Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Session Recap, 17th of October 2016. My name is Nenad, and today I will show you five different trade setups. Euro dollar, pound dollar, Australian dollar, dollar, Canadian pound, yen. Yeah, that is what we will do today. I hope that you had a great week behind you. And actually, our previous week was uh, pretty much successful. I will show you the, the results. I mean, there were not a lot of pips on the table. Uh, pips pool was less than usual. It's, it was like 50 pips, but it was compensated by the analysis that I did during the week. And if you read my tweets, I posted about uh, Australian dollar yen, dollar cad, pound dollar, euro yen, and you have chosen uh, pound dollar to be the analysis of the week. So before I proceed with uh, our webinar, risk disclaimer explain that online educational materials are developed by Admiral Markets Estonia for a global audience and Admiral Markets UK LTD takes no responsibility for the for the information accuracy. This is solely for informational and educational purposes only. Risk disclosure statement stating all possible risks associated with Forex market by accepting the risk you are also proceeding further with me. And finally I am your host today. Uh, for all people who are new to this webinar, my name is Nenad, and uh, these are past week results. Euro dollar went into a loss, 20 pips of a loss. Pound dollar didn't qualify, but went as expected. Australian dollar positional trade was good for 30 pips. Dollar cat positional trade was good for 40 pips. Pound yen trade didn't qualify. So for our previous session recap, it was 50 pips pool, and dollar cat was the trade of the week. Now, a lot of people ask me where they can actually read my analysis. Well, uh, it, it will be very easy, I will tell you now. So, you just need to go to admiralmarkets.com uh, and you will find my analysis there. Uh, alternatively, you can read on Forex Factory and also you can read it on Forex uh, Street. So, this is where you can read my analysis. Just go to Analytics, Technical Analysis and press uh, and uh, go to technical analysis, then you can find my analysis here. So you have chosen this to be the, the, the analysis of the week uh, because uh, actually you could have seen that uh, this POC zone rejected uh, our uh, price, pound dollar to the downside. And uh, for all of you who ask me what is uh, POC, POC is the zone where we place our orders. I mean, uh, read between the lines, POC zone is the zone where I personally will trade. Okay, that is where uh, I think the price will reject. So if it comes within the zone, uh, I will sell. Okay, so that is what I do. Okay, and that is what I give you. So this this is the analysis and trade setup in, I mean, in in its full sense. So POC zones are zones where we place our trade trades. So pound dollar was very very good. Also we uh, Australian dollar for me was maybe the best. I did it with Forex Street. You can find it at Forex Street. Also you have voted that Euro Yen was very good because after POC2 it, it hit POC2 and rejected to the upside. So that is POC. So once more uh, this is not point of comfort. This is point of confluence. Okay, and that is the zone where I personally place trades. Okay, you find it on session recaps and you will also see it on our live trading webinars that I think will begin after price action trading school ends. So, once more and for all, there will be no change. This is the final. This is how I have been trading for last couple of years. POC zone is the zone where trades are placed where I expect, I personally expect that this zone or the zone, POC zone will reject in usually trend direction. So where you see POC, pay attention, that will could be a great entry zone and that is why we trade always in the zone. So that is what I call POC and that is point of confluence because price action trading is not about one moving average or uh, trend line it's the confluence 
Confluence give us the best chance to win. Also, people trade me, people ask me, can I trade uh, and make money with your analysis? Guys, I need to be very clear with this because a lot of people simply uh, are new to trading and even people who trade uh, more than a year or two years still don't get what trading is about. Uh, you all know that I say uh, holy grail does not exist. But if you still want to to uh, mention holy grail and you want to hope for holy grail, I will tell you one simple truth about trading. Holy grail is money management. Remember that. We can all trade these POC zones, what I give you. We can all trade one simple system and method. But we will all have different results. Remember that, guys. It's not about giving signals. I'm teaching you how to fish. It's about your money management. Most of the time, 80 to 90% of the time, I'm correct with entries and with my analysis, POC zones. But ultimately, it does not depend on me. You need to do your own money management. You need to know what your risk is about. And remember, there is no point in just searching for different systems and systems. Systems that are proven and good, I always try to upload it on YouTube and give you indicators for that. I, I give you the analysis from my Camarilla MACD. But as I tell you, we can all trade same thing but we will all have different results because it's only about money management. The less risk you make, the chances that your trade will last longer. The higher the risk you make, the chance is that your trade will last shorter. And let me be clear with one more thing. Here, you will always find technical analysis that is pre-fact. So, before the fact, before the move happens. Okay? And also, please take, I need to tell this because a lot of people tell me that they, they, they want to make, they want signals. Guys, I'm not a signal provider. And we don't give signals. But, if you read between the lines, if you know what POC is, this analysis that I make is unique because it gives you clear levels and zones. Just you need to do your own money management. I mean, if I make 40%, 50% on my live account, maybe other person will have 20% or uh, another trader will make maybe 200%. I mean, guys, Remember, we all trade same thing, but we all have different results because it's about money management and that's it. So you need to be, I need really to be clear with this. So this is what we had previous week. And for this week, we will see what I have prepared. I have prepared a lot of setups. And please now take these rules and setups how we trade. This is Camarilla MACD, guys, what I'm giving you here in session recaps. Okay, Camarilla MACD method. I have created it and I'm using it. I've been using it, better to say, for the last couple of years since this inception. Okay, so rules are give price a breathing room. Enter within 15 pips of the predicted level if it's in agreement with your system. I mean, if you don't agree with me, then don't trade this. POC or buffer zones are zones where we place entries. I have a lot of questions. Emre, Isabella, I will, I will answer. Just, just bear with me for, for a couple of minutes. Use scaling in if you wish. Again, guys, scaling in is technique where you add to retracements. 
I mean, it will also produce different results and different opportunities. What is scaling in? I mean, I have already explained what scaling in is. In short, in a nutshell, if you see that market is dropping, what would you do? I mean, guys, what would you do if you see the market is dropping? You would sell it, right? But you sell when price is overbought. So you need price to be overbought in order to sell and make pips. You can, you can sell here and hope that the trade will go in your favor. But most of the time, and how I teach you to do is to sell when price is overbought and to buy when price is oversold. That is what trend trading is about. That is what banks do and that is what you should do in order to be profitable trader. Again, scaling in, price gets close to our POC zone. Let's say that this is POC zone and let's say that this is stop loss. Instead of making one position, you can divide your trade into multiple positions keeping risk the same. So if 0.3 lots give you 1% of risk within the stop loss limit, you can divide 0.10 lots within the zone keeping stop loss the same. Is it that hard to understand this? Really? It should be very easy because I'm very clear and very concise about the rules and about these setups. Will you take scaling in or you might not consider scaling in? It's about you and that is what will make us have different results. Sometimes scaling in will give you a great opportunity and every single of your entries will be in profit. Sometimes you will have a stop loss hit. Because trading is also about managing your losing positions. If you, if you follow me, you know that we have a great partnership with our fellow traders from Admiral Market Croatia. And there is Josip who trades with 30-40% of success. But his account is 100% in profit. So guys, what I'm telling you, money management and how you approach the trade will make the ultimate result. So sometimes you need to decide. For example, I always say, and this is very important, and some traders miss it, but please, this is very important. First touch of the zone is the most profitable. That's why we need to focus on the first touch. Sometimes, even second, third, fourth, fifth touch can give, you, can give us great trading opportunities. For example, pound dollar trade that I posted, I mean pound dollar analysis that I posted on October 13. It had five, six rejections from POC zones. Okay? And what happened is, I mean every single of this rejection was profitable. But that is what we don't do. I am always personally focused on the first touch of the zone. That is why we need to focus on the first touch. Positional trades are trend trades. Guys, I'm trend follower. And you know what my, uh, I mean, I have two-year account statement. And it has like 50% of profit. And uh, you know what, what, can be, what can be actually done with the account that is 50% in profit? I mean, guys, I don't trade the account each single day. So when you see that setup has been done, take it and don't try to mix with, I don't know, 10 trades per day. That is very important, guys, for you to know about. You should not let your winning trades and account get into losing positions. 
So yeah, I see that Reddy and Leon, they're saying that my voice sounds like a robot. Maybe there is something wrong with the sound. I don't know, guys. Maybe because I'm, oof, I have boosted my microphone. Maybe that's it. I, I will try to keep my voice a little bit calmer. Maybe that will help. I mean, uh, internet connection is good, so it shouldn't be the problem. So let's see if my voice will sound better. I hope so. Yeah, I don't know why it's breaking. Maybe, maybe it will be better now. So the thing is, I have, yes, too much passion. Indeed, Ron, because I really want, guys, I really want you to follow me and to follow what I do here. Because I am like you. I am a trader too, right? I, I, I don't write this just because I need to do this or I need to do the analysis. It takes more than one hour, an hour to find the best pair to trade. And ultimately what I wanted to say is I have managed to bring some accounts really to huge. This three hundred dollar euro account is like two thousand and eight hundred now. But it's not my greatest success. Greatest success is to keep your longer term account in profit. And that is what you can achieve by not trading each single day. And that is why these setups and my analysis should be good for you to follow in order to make pips consistently. But please have in mind that there are rules and you, you need to abide with the rules and follow strict money management like banks. Here th these are rules and setups that you already know so please take, in, take a look into this and now I will proceed to show you previous week setups and see how it actually, how they actually went. So, have in mind that I really want you to follow me on my Twitter updates. You will always be first to know when I pause the analysis. And add these levels to your system. Even if you, sometimes you will see that our trade does not hit POC zone. But it goes in our favor. If, it, if it's the fact, then try to use other techniques. This is how I do personally. Positional trades are trend trades. So in order to make trend trade, I need to have price within the trend concept to be overbought or oversold. If, the, if we have a downtrend, then I'm looking to confluence to, for the price to be in overbought territory. If I have an uptrend, I want the price to be in oversold territory using different tools. If I miss the setup, then I will go in trend, but I will use scalping method. So if I miss my POC zone, but I still want to make an entry maybe, and I see that there is momentum in the market, I will switch to lower time frames and try to go with scalping. If I see that the price is close to historical resistance or support, and that there is divergence within the concept of historical resistance and support, I will try to make counter trend trade opportunity. If I see that there is a possibility of a breakout on a chart by, by, by some chart pattern or a historical or daily high or low, I might use breakout technique. Simple as that. Sometimes we can do that but not every single day because not every single day is the day when you should make positions. If you still are eager, eager to make a trade per day, then do it correctly. Trade the first three hours during each session. You should have one set up during the first three hours of major sessions. Major sessions are namely London, New York, Tokyo and the point there is no more sessions. It's either London, New York, or Tokyo session. Okay, now, Euro dollar. This is what we had previous week. This was a loss on Euro dollar. How much of a loss? 
20 pips, guys. Respect your stop loss. We had a counter trend trade opportunity executed. Executed at around 1.1110. Yeah, we had some initial profits here. I mean, it was like 15 pips. But I cannot count 15 pips because the less that we should make is 20 pips. Okay? So, guys, this is a loss. Okay? Let me be clear. I always show you losses and winners. So, minus 20. Pound dollar. I said same as my previous analysis. Watch for 1.2500. What happened is, you see, price went down as expected. So, what I did, I, I actually made another analysis that I showed you here. So if you follow this analysis, again, you would have made a lot of pips. I cannot say money because, uh, guys, money is money. Pips is pips. If you trade $1,000 account and million dollar account, well, the percentage is percentage, right? 1% of a million is much more money than it's 1% of 1,000, right? So we cannot say much money. We need to use pips and always be focused on pips because it will be easier for you to manage your positions. If you're focused on money, only about money, you will probably lose because you will cut your trades. You will cut your winning trades. I know that. So pound dollar was in downtrend and it still is in downtrend. And I have prepared another short setup for you for pound dollar today. This was not initiated. The trade didn't qualify. But you could have scalped if you actually followed the trend. Australian dollar, I said, is in uptrend. And what we had actually here is positional buy trade executed around 75.60. So around this level, this zone. What happened is ultimately the price went down in a drawdown, but our stop loss was never hit because if you see stop loss is 75.30 and always add 2 to 5 pips to spread, even if you trade with ECN, the low was 75.31. That is why I say always respect your stop loss. So if you had taken this trade, you would have been in a profit because it went up. So 20, 30 pips, not bad concerning that we didn't have really such a strong movement on Australian pairs. Now, dollar CAD, guys, was a trade of the week for me. Dollar CAD was ranging, but we had both positional and sell trades. Well, if you can see here, our sell trade was initiated here or just after one day. So we had our webinar at 10 at 10th of October, so it was initiated around 11. So here, around this time, the trade setup was initiated. First, it went a little bit more to the upside, so it was a retracement, but then it dropped like a stone to hit 3185. And I tweeted about it, protect your profits, right? You remember? So this was like possible 35 pips of profit. Now, even if you, if, you, if you made your entry here, you would have made more, but let's say that here you made like 30 pips of a profit. And pound yen, I said sell around 128.90. Well, you see, still it didn't retrace, but it gave us great trading opportunities on lower time frames. Okay, so that was it for the previous session. Now, just uh, I will answer a couple of questions and I will proceed to this week's setups. Uh, okay, the first question uh, was from Andy. Hi, Nenad, before we start, could you tell me how to join your price action school or is it hero to, zero to hero thing? Andy, you can join price action training school each uh, second Wednesday just by signing in to uh, webinars. So that there is no special requirement about price action trading school. I mean, it's very easy 
uh, for you to sign up if you go to uh, I will show you if you go to education forex CFD and webinars uh, here you will see price action training school and so on all previous lessons you can uh, find on YouTube so go to Admiral Markets YouTube channel and hear my previous lessons after we finish with price action training school <coughs> we will do live trading each Wednesday that is my plan so let's see if Admiral Markets will allow it but if they allow it well uh, you will uh, trade live with me each Wednesday okay uh, session recaps will still stay uh, the same uh, just on live trading webinars uh, we will try to capture uh, the pips real time I mean as they happen it will be one hour so if you get a setup for that one hour it will be great if you miss a setup then I will give you pending orders that is my plan based on price action training school of course uh, for a zero to hero thing you can apply for zero to hero and uh, there is a good system and uh, a great thing is that uh, beginner traders should make profits with it because that is the system I created and I also tested it and it's on four hour time frame so part-time traders and traders who are beginner traders can benefit from it it's very simple it's easy to use you need to have patience but actually you can benefit from it I advise you to try it uh, next uh, comment is Emre and then as we know you you are a great teacher and you have perfect analysis analysis thank you uh, Emre I appreciate it indeed uh, so sorry yeah thank you very much thank you very much okay so this is it uh, next uh, question Isabella uh, and uh, then we will move on to this week's setup and I will answer your question after I finish with this week's setups. Hello Nenad, I'm having a hard time knowing when to exit the trade. I know Isabella because most of the traders have the same problems. I'm making good entries but sometimes of course because if you follow session recap and the analysis you should have good entries but the hardest thing is to when to exit, right? Sometimes take profit is set at 80 pips when I'm around say 50 pips. That's great, Isabella, actually. I don't know if I wait until 80 or exit or scale out. Isabella, that is what makes our results different. That is a great comment, guys. And here, Isabella is proving the fact that I have talked with you at the beginning uh, of this webinar. I've been talking with you about this. So that is what will differentiate our results. That is our decision. We cannot know if the price, because if we knew if the price will really get to our uh, highest take profit level, we would have all been millionaires, right? But because we don't know that, we can apply techniques. Well, what I do usually, I scale out, put the, the rest to break even, and I, I, I enjoy the free ride so if I get with 0 0.5 lots I would take 0 0.25 0 0.30 and I will leave 0 0.10 to break even sometimes I will use my whole profit stop so if I see that the price is actually going in my direction let's say that pound dollar is breaking support I will move my stop loss just two pips above this support or three pips above the support and I will still enjoy a free ride that is your own decision and that is what will make your result different than mine and every single trader that makes the same setup okay so I think that now it's very 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 clear Uh, now guys I will answer your questions but get, let me give you setups for this week uh, okay this is euro dollar okay this is euro dollar euro dollar is in downtrend and I will sell around 0 0.045 this is stop loss 0 0.0955 1.0955 is target. This is what I see on Euro dollar. 
possible breakout cell 0 1.0950 TP 1.0910 also guys watch for four hour candle close below 0 1.0950 okay watch for that and alternative buy comes around 1.0850 I mean some people will probably ask me why that low why can I make it a little bit higher well I simply can guys not possible at, for me how I see the market at this time I mean you know that I've been bearish couple last couple of weeks, weeks on uh, uh, euro dollar and uh, I'm still bearish guys if you read my analysis on uh, Forex Empire, it should have been published. I'm not sure that they published it today. I did the analysis and actually I said uh, that th th this is the setup. Zero, one, uh, uh, 1.1045 sell. And this is why. Just zoom into one hour time frame. And these are weekly pivot points. Uh, usually yes most of the time I I trade one hour time frame Goran uh, most of the time because uh, one hour time frame is good for a pullback in a trend concept here guys uh, we can also see an inner trend line like this you see that is why the price is rejecting this level here and today it already went close to POC but ultimately, I want to see another POC a little bit higher. This is another trend line here. And if you watch it here, you can see a clear confluence here. Even here, guys. See this. H3 weekly pivot point. The top of ATR inner trend line EMA 89 everything points for this pair to be over bought oversold sorry guys overbought on this time frame because on four hour it's not oversold it still has the room to be to go more down so one hour time frame it needs to be overbought and in order to sell right that is what I've been talking about since the beginning of this webinar for a price to sell you need to have it on overbought so here this is the POC zone here there will be also a trend line and I expect the price to reject if it gets here ultimately 1.0950 will be decision factor here guys watch this on daily see on daily now if it breaks this level it will be it should be a breakout sell so that is why I'm saying possible breakout sell around 09 1.0950 because then these buyers will close their positions and every single close of a, a buy order is automatic sell into the market so the price should proceed down okay and watch for four hour candle close below 1.0950 watch for four hour candle so go to four hour time frame and see if four hour candle closes below this level if you see a candle close below this level the price should go down hitting 1.0900 and ultimately it should drop to 1.0850 0850 is the zone where we might see a possible counter trade opportunity it's at L4 weekly pivot point if you go to daily you will see that there are a lot of buyers in this region historical buyers so they are waiting guys 
they are waiting here. Whatever happens, I will either buy or sell. The trade is valid for today, tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow. Pound dollar. We all know that the pound dollar is in downtrend. 1.2285 sell, 1.2345 stop loss. Don't think about stop loss. It's not that important, guys. In this sense, pay attention to what I will be saying now. You can place 1.1% of risk within 30 pips, and you can also place 1% of risk within 100 pip stop loss. It doesn't matter, guys. Stop loss is dynamic thing. Risk should be fixed. Okay? Institutional traders. And I had a good friend who worked in a risk department, but he also told me how banks trade. They have fixed risk and their stop loss is dynamic. This is what you learn on my webinars. To have a dynamic stop loss and fixed risk. Because guys, it's impossible to trade with 30 pip stop loss on, on Euro dollar and on pound New Zealand or pound yen. Why? Because both pound New Zealand and pound yen has much higher ATR than Euro dollar. So, stop loss is dynamic, risk is fixed. Your holy grail is money management. Why 22.85? And now you will see why. 22.85. One hour time frame. Again, weekly pivot points. Watch this, guys. Huge drop here. Huge drop. But where is where sellers are? Watch this. Very shorter block here. V-shaped reversal with double topish price. So, we want price to retrace even higher than this EMA. I mean, pay attention to EMA 89 on one hour time frame. Because it also has a confluence here with this top, double top, here, triple top, and weekly pivot point. So here it could also reject. So I will, I will add 2220 to 2240. It could also reject here. But ultimately I wanted more to the upside. I want a deeper retracement now, really. Because I see a trend line here. So this means that one hour is undergoing a retracement. Daily is bearish. Four hour is bearish. There is a triangle here. Or we can call it also a pennant. But one hour is having retracement. So where we want to sell when the price is over bought here but also pay attention here for scalping trades this zone can be good and I will uh, also add it to uh, the slide Australian dollar uptrend 75.35 position buy stop loss 0 0.7490 TP 76.70 Okay, very important guys for you to see these levels. Sell around 7690, 7720, 7540. So where to buy, where to sell? 7535. Why 7535? Let's go to four hour time frame weekly pivot points. This is uptrend, guys, on four-hour time frame. Clearly, right? Now, 
if you zoom into one hour, you will see that the price has a retracement. It has a trend line here. So it should go down. Retracement. Where do we want it? On one hour time frame within the oversold concept. L4, historical buyers here, very close to L4 and trend line. So 75.35 around this zone, Australian dollar should go up. Sell around 76.90. Why 76.90? Well, 76.90 because here, if you go to higher time frames, there could be, look this, head and shoulders, left, head, right. Historical head and shoulders around 76.90. Where do, how do we trade guys head and shoulders? We don't trade it as classic price action school teaches us. We don't trade when neckline is broken. We want to get early in the trade. Why? Because banks and institutional traders always get first in the trade. So we want to follow the big fish. We don't want to follow retail traders. Retail traders enter at neckline break. Institutional traders trade to, from the top of the right shoulder. That is why I think that 76, 80 to 90 might be good to sell into. Okay? So let's wait and see. Trading is about patience. Remember that. If you rush in and chase the price, you will not catch it. You will lose in the long run. Clear setup for Australian dollar. Pound yen. I did pound yen analysis, guys, today. And you can read my pound yen dragon analysis here. Analytics, technical analysis. Pound yen contained in rising wedge. Lavez, this is Lavez. This means low volatility zone. So if price wants to go down, it should break this. If price wants to go up, it should break Lavez. Lavez should give us further retracement. It will be either rejected from this zone or it will go more to the upside. This is POC indeed. So pay attention to possible rejection. But ultimately, guys, we will see what Asian session, Tokyo session will bring. Don't forget that Chinese stock market and equities move yen. Don't forget that Nikkei, Japanese 225 index equities, is actually governing yen movement. Yen moves with equities. And if Nikkei starts to drop, Pound yen should drop. If Nikkei starts to go up, pound yen should go up. Pound yen is a dangerous pair to trade, but can also be very rewarding. So that is why I say, I say we could sell around 129.00, around the top of this wedge. And that is a bearish, running bearish wedge. Okay, guys? And possible sell around 127.15 within POC concept. Break out below 126.35, guys. If the price breaks below, but not like this. It needs a bigger momentum to the downside. It should go down. And if 4-hour close, candle closes below L3 weekly, if 4-hour candle closes below this level, it should drop here. So pay attention. Everything is said here. So pay attention to this. Okay, guys, I, I have a lot of questions. I will answer as soon as I finish with this. 
presentation. We still have one more setup. Euro yen. Position sell 114.60, 115 stop, 113.80 TP. So Euro yen now is close to our sell spot. It might start guys to reject here also. So watch for one hour possible rejection soon. Maybe for a scalp trade. But if price indeed rejects toward the retraces toward POC, 114.60 is where I will sell it. A lot of confluence points here. Okay, we have a trend line descending. Multiple trend lines, guys. Multiple trend lines here. This is the zone. Weekly pivot point EMA 89. Also, we see previous bearish M pattern. This is, guys, this is M. So I think that sellers are lurking here. But also, we have a confluence here. So for short-term setups, you see it's rejecting. But this is the setup. Now let's see your comments and questions. I will roll the slides at the end of, the, of this webinar. Ilya is saying, 7.30 drag is peaks. Yes, no sell limit, so uh, euro dollar, this is euro dollar. Well, I am not sure, I think Ilya, I might place a pending sell. I don't think that there will be a lot of uh, volatility tonight because still we have ECB conference. Uh, just, guys, don't forget that you can read most important events. I have prepared most important events for you here. So here, guys, under fundamental analysis. Okay, our focus is on Chinese GDP and ECB press conference. So Chinese GDP will move the market, guys. Believe me, I'm 100% sure about it. Just pay attention to yen and Australian dollar if you can stay late in Asia session. If you cannot stay late, then when you wake up, pay attention what happened. Chinese GDP will be released on Wednesday, 19th of October. And why you should care? Because China's influence on the global economy investor sentiment is huge. This is historical result. Let's see what will happen. Okay, next question. After one hour, there is Draghi. Maybe, I am ready, there will be a spike. But don't be impatient. Because if we don't have the price today, some of this setup might be initiated tomorrow. So let's see. Mario is asking, uh, is Euro dollar have a Maribozu candle? Is, is Euro dollar having a Maribozu candle on daily? No, we don't. I don't see here Marubozu here. You see, now we don't have a Marubozu. This is not Marubozu. This was Marubozu here. Uh, but you see, it, it is it rejected from 88.6 on daily. Yeah, this was Marubozu. We will also do live trading with Marubozu high volatility setup. So this was daily, yeah. Now it's not Marubozu. Anis is asking, how can I get ATR indicator? Send me an email. Email to tarantulafx at gmail.com. Ilya, pound dollar 120, 2285 Fibonacci 50 of last day, daily one. Great. I didn't do that on daily, but great. Excellent. Forex trader, short the right shoulder. Indeed, Forex trader. We always short where the banks do. 
So if banks want to short at the right shoulder, we want to join early movement, not late movement. Late movement is for continuation. Early movement is for position. Assam, do you think it is already retraced and may continuation now? Which pair, Assam? Forex trader, short the GBP, indeed. Assam, Australian dollar. Australian dollar, well, Australian dollar. It's going up, but we might see some retracement. I mean, if this trend line rejects the price, we would probably see a long setup. Let's see. Maybe we will see a short setup first. For, Forex trader is saying point of control. No, I don't know what point of control is. I call it point of confluence. Isabella is asking, what is order block? Well, Isabella, let me find you. I always use, I will use this example with, with, order, with the order block concept. I already explained what order blocks are, but let's try again. Bearish order block is the low of bullish candle prior to move down. So when you see this spike down, you should always mark it on your charts. It doesn't matter which pair, because order blocks exist on every single pair. This marks previous buyers that turn sellers. Conversely, bullish order block is the height of bearish candle prior to move down. So you should find this is possible here. Bullish order block. But it cannot be viewed here on this concept. It, the price should go up and then retrace. Like this, it, it needs to go down then retrace. So this will be bullish order block if the price breaks this and comes here to retest this. Then this candle here this level here will be bullish order block. So these spikes, pin bars, mark order blocks. I already talked about this. Forex trader is calling pound yen the beast. I call pound New Zealand the beast and pound yen as dragon. Nathan is saying, can you please show again uh, Australian dollar, of course. This is Australian dollar. Uh, Leon is saying, it's Friday's Australian dollar New Zealand valid around POC. Yes, Leon, it is, but please protect your profits now. Because, uh, well, it's, it's Monday and you have trade running for two days, right? So, yes, it's still valid, but please protect your profits. Scale out and put the rest to break even or do your money management. I'm, well, I'm glad that you are in profits. Okay. Gorav is saying, please start a webinar, webinar series for GAN trading method. Gorav, I know about GAN and I had some, I mean GAN is not GAN, we will call it GAN. GAN is not just about uh, trading method, it's actually a complete science. So I know a lot of things, mostly from Murray Matt, because I was a student also of Murray Matt. It was one of my favorite uh, concepts in trading, and it still is, but I have focused more on my Camarilla MACD, my personal, so uh, I'm not sure if you're referring to GAN indicators, because GAN indicators are not that, uh, I mean, I'm not sure that they're even based on GAN, because GAN move, uh, he based his science about timing, about repetition and, and alignment, so that indicators that usually say GAN, they're just simple indicators. They don't have anything of GAN in it. Uh, SM is asking, how do you, what do you think about Australia and New Zealand? Where I already respond, a reply to Leon. Actually, uh, Leon is in profit, so it's still valid, yeah. But protect your profits. Okay, now guys, we have Euro-Dollar, okay. 
I have a lot of questions, guys, so I, I am really not able to follow an answer to all. We are running out of time. Let's let's use this. Euro dollar. This is Euro dollar setup. Uh, Ron is asking about Euro Audi. Yes, I will show Euro Audi, but let's answer this. Okay, euro dollar. This is where I will buy. But if it gets close to 1.11, 1.100, protect your profits. Because this is very important level on my charts. 1.1110. It might retest it. But ultimately, you will see how the price will develop. So, yes, I will roll the slides again, and then I will answer your uh, question about di the different pairs. So, euro dollar, pound dollar. Australian dollar. Pound yen and finally euro yen. Uh, one more, yeah, I see another question. Please once ex uh, once more explain uh, movement about uh, with uh, equities uh, movement of equities with dollar yen and pound yen. Well, uh, I will. Uh, uh, let's say basically, when it's risk-on environment, commodities prices tend to increase. That is about Australian dollar. But stock markets go up, and there is demand for positive swaps. Okay. Also, have in mind that Australian yen, pound yen, all yen pairs, are very good to trade with equities because Japanese can get cheap credits so they invest overseas heavily when it's risky they bring the money back it's, it's called repatriating the money back creating demand for yen and vice versa when it's bullish equities they pump their money overseas which means they sell yen and buy foreign currency I hope that this explains now I have the time just to show you euro audience dollar uh, dollar cat I already yeah okay dollar cat I didn't show so euro audience dollar cat and we can call it a day euro audience same guys this is this is very bearish because this is low this is you see this is another low so what I would do is pay attention to this price because it already break this low now if this breaks this low it should go down on four hour time frame okay see it should go to l3 here very bearish also pull back towards this this zone here 4500 to 4525 could be shorted into this is very very bearish euro -D. but watch for possible retracement okay see it has a POC here dollar CAD okay one more dollar CAD and that's it dollar CAD is actually yeah this looks like it might reject now because it's sitting close to trend line on four hour time frame so one hour is look for one two three Okay, so one, two, if it breaks this, it should go up. So one, two, three, it should even, I mean, this is too high for me. So I would be watching for this one. If it breaks this one, okay, it could go more to the upside. It's close to trend line. So watch for one, two, three pattern. Okay, guys, I hope that this was all. Uh, I mean, that this uh, helped you. Uh, yeah, this is dollar cat. Sorry if you don't see the chart. 
this is our cat so watch this four hour trend line triple bottom possibly one hour one two three i mean three would be valid here but i would also pay attention here because this is where we would also see w adam and adam this will be a sort of adam and adam so if it breaks here i would go for a buy okay guys i think everything is clear now uh, we are already over the time thank you for listening I will be here with you soon. Uh, let's see what this week will give us. And uh, I wish you a great day and great week ahead. So, guys, uh, talk to you soon. And Martin is also, yeah, Martin, his comment. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Martin. Uh, great comment. Uh, Martin is actually, yeah, I need to just reply to one more comment. Your greatest success is your gift of teaching us to fish your analysis is wonderful however the logic you give us for these setups is the real gem can't stress too much that is this is the educational element of your presentation that is most beneficial to our understanding of how markets work so here guys thanks a lot for these kind of comments I really appreciate it uh, I will be here with you soon and let's see what market will give us cheers guys talk soon trade safe